Welcome back to Garden Ninja. Today in the exploding atom garden, it's absolute chaos because 17 brand new trees have arrived and I'm going to be digging them in today and showing you the results. So 17 trees arrived this morning for the exploding atom garden. A few of them are behind me here. Now I'm going to be using a mix of root ball and bare root trees for the exploding atom garden. And autumn is the perfect time to do that because you can get them in, they can get established before the spring and then you get a full flush of foliage and colour next year. Now bare root trees have been grown in the ground and then in the winter months when they're dormant they're lifted. The soil is then removed from the roots and they're then bagged up and sold as bare root trees. They're cheap and cheerful because you can get more in a van and they're easier to manoeuvre. But there is a higher chance that they won't survive so you've got to be really delicate with them and make sure that you get them in as soon as you can. So I've just finished digging the 17th pit for the trees. It's getting really cold, my hands are freezing which is why I've got these sort of Paul Daniels magician's gloves on. But I'm just going to quickly show you one of these holes and just to show you the kind of width I'm talking about. So this is one and a half times the width of one of the root balls over there but it should be the same level when the root ball goes in. So I'm going to bring the tree over, pop it in and if I need to make any micro adjustments I can do and then I'll backfill it and stake it and I'll show you how I'm going to do that in just a bit. Right now I'm so cold I need to go back in, get a cup of coffee and recharge my batteries because I'm a little bit exhausted. So I tend to just use one stake when staking trees, unless it's incredibly exposed, which this site isn't. If you use too many stakes, you run the risk of the tree being a bit too restricted and comfortable, and it won't be then be forced to send out more roots, which is more stable for the tree. So if you leave it with one and it has some movement, the tree will anchor itself and send out more roots to try and stabilise itself. So another top tip is that once you've got your bare roots near your planting hole, Check the upper branches. If there are any that are damaged, use a pair of sharp, clean secateurs and nip them off. There's no point planting it with damaged branches. If you do it on the ground, you don't have to mess around with ladders or wobbling about. So do it now, and then when you put it in, you don't have to worry about pruning. Another good tip to bear in mind when staking is if you stake at a slight angle. And you can see stakes that go at a real crazy angle, but unless you're planting on the side of a mountain or next to the sea where the wind's incredible, um, I tend not to do that. But I do put it at slight, a slight angle. Also important to note predominantly where the breeze, the exposure, the wind comes from. Now I know on this plot that the wind comes from over that way, so it's going to blow against these trees. So I put the stake towards the wind so that when the tree is blown it's not knocking against that stake and damaging itself. So I'm going to use one of these ties and tie this Gladitia in and then I'm going to crack on with the other 16 trees. Before I go for a well-deserved beer and a soap, I'm just going to introduce you to them. The first one here is a bachelor, and this is a bachelor Jack Monty. It's Himalayan white birch and it's multi-stem. That's going to look incredible both in spring and in winter because it's got these brilliant white stems. If we move over here, I'm trying to trip over myself, we've got a bachelor in fast fastigator which means that it grows up in a great column. So it's related to the other bachelor, but it's a different species. Moving on back here, we've got the Gladitia sunburst, the honey locust tree. Fantastic in poor soil, it's 
exposed conditions will pretty much grow everywhere and it'll have an incredible limey green canopy but the canopy is really thin so it doesn't catch catch cast too much shade if you follow me over here we then move on to the really moody dark purple border so we've got coralus here purple coralus which is a hazel again multi-stem lots of interest adds a bit of texture the queen of all of my trees is this it's a phagus sylvatica daywick and it's purple again fastigate like the other tree it's absolutely da -da -da -da, ginormous in height but very thin so it won't take up too much space but it'll get me that look that i'm going for which is real drama we've got another hazel coralus there feel like i'm on big brother we've got more gladitsias here moving over to the back of the border we've got in the quagmire this gorgeous if you can see that up there Asa campestra which is a native uk tree field maple again fastigate so it's got a really thin column like look we've got another himalayan birch there another acer and i think that's our lot so i've been garden ninja if you enjoyed this video why not subscribe to my youtube channel you can watch loads more videos on garden design and gardening and also follow this the exploding atom garden as it progresses thanks for watching Happy Gardening!